Berlin, capital of Germany, a city like an open history book. This Berlin high school, the John Lennon Gymnasium, sends its 10th graders out on a scavenger hunt to discover history by themselves. It's a game in three rounds. How can we learn from history? How can people make a difference? It's a project for you to actually experience history. You are going to be working in teams and you will be given tasks via our group chat. Meeting heroes and historic eyewitnesses exploring the past, present and future. You are going to compete. Then let's go out and experience history. The German history scavenger hunt. So, welcome. Our little scavenger hunt begins. The competition starts. Um, I have to know, first of all, were you able to agree on a team name? So what's your name? Yellow, Please. Yellow, Yellow, Yellow Submarine. Team Bluebirds! Your topic is German remembrance culture. Your task is to find out what it was like being a Jew in Nazi Germany. Both teams start with the task of exploring the darkest chapter of German history, the Nazi period. The memory of millions killed and heinous crimes against humanity is present in everyday life in Germany. They set out to find out about the reminders and lessons of Nazi time, about memorials dedicated to the victims of Nazi Germany and the memories of those who suffered. And during their scavenger hunt through Berlin, both teams will get a message that will have them embark on an emotional journey. Team Yellow Submarine is out to find the Stolperstein for Margot Friedlander, who as a young Jewish woman was deported to the concentration camp Theresienstadt. Stolpersteine are brass cobblestones engraved with the names of Nazi victims, placed in front of the buildings where they had lived before they were persecuted and often murdered. Stolpersteine can be found in most German cities and almost everywhere in Berlin. Jahrgang 1921, sie hat überlebt. And they are going to meet Margot Friedlander, who survived the Holocaust. She's waiting for you at 3 p.m. in her apartment. Ask her about the experiences during Nazi time. What can we learn from history? What's her message to all of us? The team struggles to agree on questions. So how do you talk as a young German to a Holocaust survivor? The team becomes visibly nervous before this encounter. Talking to somebody who suffered at the hands of an older German generation is difficult, even if you were born in a new millennium. What are you able to ask? What goes too far? There's a sense of shame that none of the students can shrug off. Wie alt sind Sie da ungefähr? Das war vielleicht 18, 19. Als ich auf dem Weg nach Hause war, vor, kurz vor dem Haus, ähm, fiel mir ein Mann auf, der äh, mir komisch aussah. Und ich sagte zu mir, wenn er ins Haus geht, sei vorsichtig. Ich trug ja den Stern, sehr prominent, und ich habe mit meiner Handtasche den Stern zugedeckt und bin ins Haus gegangen und wirklich hat dieser Mann vor unserer Türe gestanden. Und das war der Gestapo-Mann, der meinen Bruder verhaftet hat, ein paar Stunden davor. Haben Sie Ihre Mutter und Ihren Bruder wiedergesehen? Nein. Die sind ein paar Tage später in einem Transport nach dem Osten gekommen. Ich war dann ein Jahr und drei Monate versteckt. Deutsche Menschen, die ich nie gekannt habe vorher, haben mir geholfen, mich versteckt. Und bis ich eines Tages selber äh, verhaftet wurde, meine Mutti. Mein Bruder und ich. Ich sage immer, dass das Blut in meinen Adern dasselbe ist wie in euren Adern. Es gibt kein muslimisches, christliches oder jüdisches Blut. Es gibt nur menschliches Blut. 
Wir sind alle Menschen und es darf nie wieder geschehen. Ihr müsst dafür sorgen, dass es nicht wieder geschieht. Für eure Zukunft, das ist meine Mission. Ich bin dankbar, dass die Regierung das Grundgesetz vor 70 Jahren gemacht hat, dass ihr alle Menschen seid und Menschen erkennen müsst. Und wenn heute es wieder brodelt, da sage ich immer, seid vorsichtig, so hat es damals angefangen. Alles Gute. Danke. Danke. Tschüss. Schönen Tag. I got a weird feeling to think about it that it happened here because now life here is completely different. We talk with other people and we are open-minded. She's pleased with the Grundgesetz. The Grundgesetz says that every person is the same and that's what she kept on saying. Every human has blood in them and no blood is different, so. In the meantime, Team Blue Bears receives new instructions. They are being invited by the principal of Lucknitz Elementary School to literally carry some of Germany's historical baggage. The school was built on the grounds of a synagogue that had been destroyed in World War II. It is in the heart of Berlin's so-called Bavarian Quarter, an area that once buzzed with Jewish life. And the school has made it a mission to preserve the memory of those who once lived in the area and were murdered by the Nazis. This is a nachgebauter Koffer. Um, der, der richtige, um, hat, den richtigen hat ein Lehrer uh, in dem Vernichtungslager Auschwitz uh, gefunden. Und er war total verwundert, weil um, der in der Nähe von ihm gewohnt hat. Jeder Jude, der deportiert worden ist, hat von den Nazis eine Liste bekommen, was sie mitnehmen dürfen. Und uh, der Alfred Israel Berger hat hier auch den Koffer hier, hat ein paar Sachen mitgebracht. Können wir euch auch mal zeigen? Ja, also es gab harte und weiche Kragen und den Haken konnte man halt immer abnehmen. Und halt nur so wichtige Sachen irgendwie, halt auch, zum, die man zum Leben braucht, dass sie halt denken, oh ja cool, da kann ich ein neues Leben anfangen. Aber die wurden halt dann, dann umgebracht. Wir laufen mit dem Koffer den Weg nach den ähm, dieser Mann gelaufen ist zum Bahnhof. Und Sie wollt ihr mitkommen, da wo wir jetzt hinlaufen zu dem Marsch? Ja, so ja gerne. gerne. But before they leave, the students want to show a memorial wall they are building for the neighborhood victims. Um, hier ist Alfred Israel Berger und der wurde ähm, geboren am 29.06.1868 und der ist gestorben am 17.08.1942. Und es wurden uns ungefähr insgesamt 6 Millionen Juden, das steht es auch, ähm, gestorben, ähm, getötet. Finally, they set out on a walk that a Jewish neighbor named Alfred Israel Berger once made to Platform 17 at Grunewald Station, from which he was deported. It was his last walk through Berlin before he was murdered. A solemn procession led by sixth graders. an dem Gleis zu sagen, wo die ganzen Juden äh, eingesammelt wurden in dem Sinne und halt in die, nach, also meistens erst nach Theresienstadt, aber dann halt in die äh, Lager gebracht wurden, in die, in die Lager, wo sie halt meistens umgebracht wurden. You can just imagine them just standing here and entering the train and it's just not a nice thing to think about, but I think it's necessary. Welcome back, teams. You have completed your first task. Um, we actually got to meet Margot Friedländer. Well, did you find out anything about why she decided to come back to Germany? Go a little bit more into detail um, about how she managed to survive. I, w I don't want to like pressure her to tell something she didn't want to tell us about. So I we kind of I felt we kind of felt uncomfortable. Something she just didn't talk about, which I think it's f is fine. 
Team Yellow Submarine stumbled. In meeting a victim of the Holocaust face to face, there were many questions they did not ask, out of fear of hurting Margot Friedlander. Team Blue Bears, who did not have to face a victim personally, is better able to answer their teachers' questions. All over Germany there are many memorials and plaques and also active remembering activities. We also ask the students what they you know, think of their school doing these projects and if they think this contributes to something like this never happening again. Those are sixth graders, so um, I would imagine it's um, maybe a little difficult for them to, to, to understand actually. We were actually really stunned because they were so smart. <laughs> the teachers quickly settle on a winner. The winner in this case is Team Blue Bears. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Team Blue Bears has um, won uh, uh, a safari of sorts and this will be a so-called Trabi Safari. Next a tour in these cartoon-like trabi cars gets our students propelled into the world of communist East Germany and the Cold War. And they meet a pilot who targeted Berlin in one of the biggest military aerial missions ever flown. His ammunition? Candy. 